Business is booming at kitty cat walks. And now with more customers and employees, they've got their paws on a whole lot more sensitive data. They know that Google Cloud DLP will help them protect that data and reduce their risk. But with so many transformation options, it could be a real challenge figuring out which ones to use and when. Today, we'll talk about what de-identification is, the factors to consider when choosing a de-identification technique, and check out a few examples, including crypto-based tokenization. De-identification is the process of removing personal identifying information from your data. Common examples of personal identifying information, or PII, are credit card numbers, addresses, phone numbers, and names. Of course, some parts of your system might need access to this information, billing for example, but other parts do not. This is where de-identification with DLP comes in. The DLP API can intelligently detect sensitive information and use a number of de-identification transformation techniques to mask, delete, tokenize, or otherwise obscure the data. Choosing the right de-identification transformation will depend largely on two things. First of all, we're going to need to consider what kind of data we want to de-identify. Are we going to try to de-identify dates? By using date shifting, we can shift date values by a random amount of time. Or maybe we're trying to hide text from images. Well, image redaction will work there. DLP uses infotype detectors and optical character recognition to find text in image files and mask it with an opaque rectangle. The second thing to consider is the purpose for de-identifying the data. This is important because some de-identification techniques will completely hide sensitive values, while others will still allow you to extrapolate important information about the data. Let's consider an example. Check out this excerpt from a chat log between a customer and a Kitty Cat Walks customer service rep. When we de-identify it using masking, the sensitive content is replaced by a masking character, like an asterisk or a hash symbol. There isn't much that we can deduce about the information that's being removed. When it's de-identified using replacement, where it can be replaced by something else like its corresponding info type, we can at least know that what the customer entered was an email address. In both cases, we successfully removed the personal information, but with replacement, we can at least tell what info type was removed. Other techniques use bucketing to help you generalize distinguishing values in your data based on custom values or ranges. This is especially useful for data meant to be used for reports or for data analysis. We'll be able to make use of the data without exposing it unnecessarily. For example, when the finance department wants to write a report on salary info, Considering there's only one director of catnaps, it'd be easy for anyone looking at this data to learn what that person's salary is, potentially sensitive information. By applying bucketing here, we're able to use the financial data while protecting the employee's privacy. Another powerful de-identification category worth noting is crypto-based tokenization. Cloud DLP can securely encrypt sensitive data using a cryptographic key and replace it with a hash or a token. Cloud DLP supports several types of tokenization, including some that are reversible, so that you can even re-identify the de-identified data. Here's one more example. We scanned some log files of Kitty Cat Walk's issue ticketing system and exported the results to BigQuery. You'll see that in the data column, it shows text that we've had replacement applied on various info types. But check out the first column. Here, we applied tokenization and pseudonymized the user ID. The values in this column are unrecognizable, but if we run a query like this one to give us a count based on the user ID, we can see how many issues there are for each unique user. This was accomplished without exposing the value that we've replaced, so it can be used for data analysis without risk of compromising user data. Furthermore, the user ID values can be re-identified by individuals or teams that are authorized to access the encryption key used to tokenize the values in the first place. So. Which de-identification technique is the best choice for kitty cat walks to protect their sensitive customer and employee data? The good news is Cloud DLP offers enough de-identification options and flexibility that they won't have to prescribe a blanket policy for all of their PII. Understanding the trade-offs of each technique will empower them to get the most value from their data while protecting it every step of the way. Next time, we'll take a closer look and examine how some of these de-identification transformations work to protect and secure your sensitive data. See you then.